Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Race Cars Universe. Today I have a special treat for you guys. Earlier this year I traveled from New Zealand to Europe to cover the amazing Goodwood Festival of Speed. It was my first time there and I had a real blast seeing and hearing those magnificent vehicles that made the history of motorsport and racing. Being Italian myself, I then decided to embark on a two days trip visiting the most important museums of Italy's automotive heritage. This is the first video of a mini-series where I take you through what makes Alfa Romeo so historically relevant and how this brand was able to revolutionize the world by bringing a wind of change in terms of engineering, motorsport and new ideas and concepts. Welcome to Arese, Milan, where the Alfa was founded in 1910 by a group of investors and later inherited the name of one of his major contributors, Nicola Romeo, turning this great brand into what it is known today as Alfa Romeo. Join me on an exciting journey as I explore this marvelous museum, experiencing it through the eyes of a first-time visitor to really feel what made the history of Italian cars. This is probably one of my favorite things when they show you the evolution of the brand and even the uh, the badges starting 1910 and then 1919, 1925 world champion so that they add the uh, a crown or on the logo. Nineteen forty-five, and then more branding evolution. Nineteen fifty, more color, as he says there on the description. Nineteen seventy-two, the Milano writing disappears with the advent of the new Pomigliano d'Arco factory, and then twenty fifteen, the rebranded, more slick design. Remembering also that Alfa Romeo was powering the aircrafts from the first and second world war 8.5 liter 130 horsepower quite interesting eh 12.5 liter seven cylinder radial engine beautiful wow the whole airplane here Wow, this, this section is stunning, eh? Wow, this section is amazing, eh? That's true. There is always something about aeronautics that fascinates everyone, especially people that are into mechanics and engineering like me and you guys watching, I guess. These things are works of art. Considering this came out in 1931, look at that. And what a machine, look at this thing, wow. It's a 28 liter, nine cylinder radial engine. I put myself, uh, for comparison, you can see how big it is. <laughs> you can tell the evolution here with this 50 liter, 18 cylinder. It's got two rows of radial cylinders Wow, that's the exhaust, let me go behind it, this is crazy, even the propeller is quite big, seems like a probably a 3 meter diameter, wow, and then this one from 1952, already V8 90 degree instead of radial, 10 liter push, pushing out 330 horsepower. I gotta say, the V8 really revolutionized the whole industry, not just for automotive but also for aircrafts. Just look at these beauties, man. Look at that. Wow. Something cool here for all the boating guys. 
Look at this thing. 225 kilometers an hour or 140 miles an hour with a V8 twin hovered camshaft Alfa Romeo engine. Look at that. What a beauty. Proof that Alfa Romeo was powering and motorizing everything that was fast. <laughs> Stunning. I gotta say guys, even the whole experience here, the museum, the architecture behind it, it's uh, it's quite interesting, eh? Quite cool actually, very, very scenic to go around here. Same as the entrance here, the museum. Wow. What a beauty. Just opens up like that here. Sensational. A truly remarkable museum for what I can see. It's the first time I'm here. We have the first 15 horsepower Corsa from 1911. You can tell there is a line here. Every car is a line. And that leads to the model year sort of a decade of pertinence. We go 1920s, 1930s and so forth. It's quite quite cool actually. It's very well done. And these are also not really removable from the ground. That means that they have conceived this whole museum in a way that is unequivocal like it's gonna stay like this and then we have the RL Supersport 1925 they call this one the masterpiece what's really striking is the uh, Alfa Romeo engraving inside the glass of the front headlights quite cool you can tell the the whole surface of the bodywork has been hand hammered wow proper coach building and then here the 6C Rensport 1931 another one actually more sleek design you can tell it's faster just by looking at it and then here the 8C quite a historical and extremely relevant name in the Alfa Romeo history the 8C from Mille Miglia 1932 we're slowly getting into the 1940s and 50s here with the uh, 6C 2300 from 1935 beautiful lines from Alfa Romeo here together with the 6C Golden Arrow Sport 1947 Proper European classic lines and design, isn't it? And then the 1900 from 1950. Something a bit more easy and lightweight. Together with the Super Sprint. Now this, this car is cool. Proper two-seater, actually two plus two coupe with some sort of a hard top look at this beauty like it's perfect i don't think a db5 would get any sexier than this they're both really cool cars you can tell the design is pretty much similar from those times and then we have the giulietta from 1955 the first instance of the world-renowned model the giulietta sporting this Four cylinder 1300cc, 1 1.3 liter of twin overed camshaft goodness. And then here we get to the 2600 sprint from 1962. These cars are all manual, manual transmission. You never get an automatic here in Italy. <laughs> not until the modern times 
and one of my favorites the 1962 Julia the one that the uh, Carabinieri used to drive around a lot the police force for a very good reason it was fast lightweight 1600 cc 90 horsepower top speed of 170 kilometers an hour imagine doing 170 in a car like this and from the 1960s we now step down into the future 1970 and the first v8 equipped on the 1970 montreal 2500 cc pushing out 200 horsepower man what a car one of my all-time favorites alfa romeo literally like another two plus two almost like the same configuration of a ford mustang in terms of interior space and uh, size roughly 200 horsepower 220 kilometers an hour production numbers of just a little shy of 4,000 units so a very rare car indeed then we step into the 70s with the uh, Alfa Sud, as we say in Italian, 1100 cc. This was the first one uh, with the boxer displacement. 63 horsepower, 150 kilometers an hour of top speed. Now, I have seen plenty of these turned into race cars for the very reason that it's super lightweight and the engine bay allows easy modifications. But most of all, the boxer engine, it's great for the low center of gravity and the Alfetta from 1972 we're getting into some really cool styling here guys look at this aisle with these three beauties and that's the um, boxer which is which Alfa is famous for four cylinder 1200 cc 60 horsepower now the thing that it's really sort of a um, curse for any mechanic is the fact that it's got inwards disc brakes so you got to do a lot of maintenance a lot of work just to get to replace discs or brake pads but apart from that very reliable durable and a bit peppy as an engine itself more futuristic stuff here from the 70s we step into the 80s to the uh, very well-known Alpha 75 I have a really soft spot for this car I grew up with it I'm an 80s child so I've seen these around everywhere in Italy growing up one of the most known models in modern history for Alfa Romeo the Alpha 75 was rocking a four-cylinder in line two liter 150 horsepower with a top speed of 200 kilometers an hour something that was considered a bit more a corporate and a bit of a step up from a fiat and then the 164 3 liter v6 first time for the v6 and probably the most the most known power plant from alfa romeo 3 liter 189 horsepower and 230 kilometers an hour and here's the v6 in all its splendor and here in display beautiful very compact like every other v6 is and this 164 is so clean flagship for Alfa Romeo the most luxurious tourer that they were offering back in the days and then now in the 90s we have the 156 another really known model in the historical lineup of Alfa Romeo with a four cylinder in line 2 liter 155 horsepower and 215 kilometers an hour in the year 2000 one of the most beautiful cars ever created by mankind the new Alfa Romeo 8C I say new because the other 8C is right there the very first one back from 1932 Mille Miglia this car is like an expression of pure Italian beauty design waves 
and sexiness on wheels. Eight cylinder V8, 4.6 liter, 450 horsepower, almost 300 kilometers an hour top speed. I remember press doing a review of this car complaining about the bad handling but to be fairly honest with you guys I'll just rock this one in my garage as a design masterpiece look at the teardrop window it's a beautiful shape look at this thing wow I gotta say guys the whole art direction in the whole museum it's quite outstanding it's just brilliant it spans Floors above floors above floors of just rare cars and history of Alfa Romeo, the brand. So now, after doing all this uh, 1900 to 2000s, we are right down to the next level where we find even more special cars. You can already see what I'm saying, isn't it? The Disco Volante literally translates into UFO <laughs> what a special car even the way it's presented 1952 disco volante super leggera body Two years later, the 2000 Sportiva, which means sort of sporty in English, but still a disco volante as well. Look at this thing, wow. Beautiful car. To see both of them so close to each other is quite incredible. And then here, the Julia Sprint Speciale prototype. Looks like it's made entirely in aluminium. Cool color. And here we have some sort of a bus, like a teardrop sort of shape. Very, very weird. It's called aerodynamica, which means aerodynamic. And, and I get it, it's definitely aerodynamic. <laughs> Although a bit like a spaceship. It's cool that they have put them all together here. The spaceship, the UFO, <laughs> and obviously what I call the wedge, literally. The 70s were a really cool period for Bertone design because from Alfa Romeo to Lancia between this one, the Alfa Romeo Carabo and the Stratos from, Alfa, from Lancia, Bertone was going all out on this sort of uh, wedgy designs with um, extremely prominent front ends timeless uh, Ital design Iguana from Giugiaro another really known designer very cool glittery paint job of this one 1969 America was going to the moon and we were building glittery, strange, oddly shaped cars each to their own each to their own and then 33-2 coupe speciale 33-2 because it resembles the shapes of the 33 stradale you can tell it's a 33 inspired one because of the structure of the front windscreen and the gull wing opening doors you go, go also have a massive canopy to access the rear engine which in this case is a v8 twin spark as well alfa romeo being known for twin sparks and really cool here is also the quadrifoglio the clover logo that spans out with these two lines there it's beautiful And another prototype here, the Nuvola Cloud, literally, from 1996. 
design from that era. That's what prototypes are. They are design exercise that precedes production and ideas for the next models. So this is the floor literally of all the prototypes. I really, really enjoyed it. Let's go to the next one. What a beautiful opening on all these amazing cars. 1300 Sprint, 1962, Giulietta Ti, an evolution of the species as they call it, 1957. Giulietta Sprint Special, now that's a really cool car, isn't it? Look how different from the other Giulietta. Less boxy, more streamlined, stunning. And then the SZ. Nineteen fifty seven Julia TI Super nineteen sixty three Julia TZ. This is us also very known. You can tell there with the mirrors how it was completely cut straight the back from Zagato. Very known coach builder back in the days and still now actually. 1963 Julius Sprint GT and the all-time favorite, the top of the top, the Julius Sprint GTA 1965. Now, I don't know if you guys know about Alphaholics. It's a company in UK that rebuilds only these sort of cars and they remake them with uh, noble materials like magnesium, carbon fiber, and so forth, titanium. You should go check them out if you like these sort of cars. And then another Zagato there, a, 19, a 1600 Junior 1972. So this is more the uh, Quadrifoglio Verde, the clover section of the museum with the sporty version of the old classics. My top picks are obviously the GTA and the Zagato Giulia. Beautiful cars. Let's go to the next level, guys. It's only getting better. This is what I wanted to see. The winning room. Ascari, Fangio, Ferrari. All big names in the Alfa Romeo history. In the history of automotive in general. Racing DNA, that's the way they put it. What an epic museum, guys. This is actually not a museum, it's like a, getting into a movie. It's a totally different experience compared to any other museum I've been to. Totally worth the visit. And wow, just goosebumps, goosebumps. Stunning, isn't it? This one was from Le Mans. Imagine that. Louis Le Mans with a car like that. This was an eight cylinder in line, which was crazy back then if you think about it. A legend is born, definitely. Look at the aerodynamic features of this one. Crazy. 1935 Aerodynamica. So many cool cars. Wow. True history. Even the colors. This one is actually a little bit different from the other one. 
It's a true bright red versus some sort of a wine red Vinaccia as we say in Italian Oh, this this was equipping a V12 Wow Love to see that The engine bay The clover, obviously And the most special one of them all Is clearly the two most special ones Are right here This is the one that Enzo Ferrari was driving As you can see it seems to have two engines, one at the front and one at the back. Now imagine that. Now just imagine thinking about putting two engines inside the same car. That section there, the, the side skirt, is an entire big fuel tank. Same as for the other side. And this one actually has two Six cylinder in line, dual hoverhead camshaft, staggered one near the other. Imagine that. See that? One close to the other. What a place, guys. What a place. I'm so glad I'm here. And we step here into the next section with more victories, more epic drivers, starting from Giuseppe Nino Farina. I'm not sure if you knew it, but Pinin Farina is actually the, the union of two names, Pinin and Farina. And they started coach building cars and also driving them to, to victory. Nothing more inspirational than that. Build your car and race it to win look at the stripped version unbelievable this is a whole fuel tank you were sitting behind the fuel tank wrapping all around you <laughs> this is a flat 12 cylinder engine with some sort of a supercharger at least it seems like a supercharger wow what a car Big wheels too, massive. And yet another Juan Manuel Fangio. Look at these cars, man. Just pure history. Peering through our eyes. Interiors are worth dying for. Look at those gauges. Stupendous stuff. Another one here. They just don't stop. So many cars, man. Eight cylinder in line. There you go. How many do you want? We got it. That's the air intake, by the way. Because this is a supercharger as well. They were supercharging already back then. Wow. Almost like the uh, Americans. And wow, look at this thing. 1952 12 cylinder boxer with individual throttle bodies and carburetors. 2500 cc, 285 horsepower, and 10,000 RPM. So these guys were reaching 10,000 RPM already in the 50s for racing purpose, obviously. What a beast! Beautiful. These were like rocket ships, like fast, proper fast. Look at the uh, the supercharger. That's massive. It's a big lung right there. Coming in here for the airbox. The longest ever straight, unpredictable weather. That must be the oil tank. I mean, it looks like. And this is the yeah, that's that's the eight cylinder in line. Yes. Wow. Look at the exhaust. Gated four speed. Plus reverse. And a huge fuel tank again. 
sitting just behind the driver. And we finally get to the racing section of the uh, museum, which, I mean, I was already covering the race cars from the beginning of the video, but yeah, this is the hall that is dedicated to, obviously, Nuvolari, which was another genius driver from the days. But this place is just as stunning, guys. Like, it's unbelievable. I like if you're passionate about cars this is hard to describe i'm getting emotional here the daytona 1968 tipo 33 kindly uh equipped here in the museum with mirrors so that you can actually peer through the back of the cars we've got the scarab from 1966 another incredible car with the uh Completely cut rear tail. It was all about lightweight, guys. It always has been. And these ones are quite special too. Imagine going around with 1975 TT12 and the 1977 SC12 Turbo. I remember seeing these cars in, on TV when I was a kid wondering how could they go that fast and how could they be looking like airplanes and now seeing them here is quite incredible imagine driving without the windscreen <laughs> wow and here the the 12 cylinder boxer equipped in these cars what a beautiful execution very cool color Sort of a gold powder thingy. What a special place. I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Seriously, like this is beyond what I was expecting. Alfa Romeo is so, so special, isn't it? Including this GTA 1970, 1300 Junior. Those were the years of the Julia Sprint, the GTA M. And also, if you think about it, the Ford Escort, because that's pretty much the same formula. Lightweight, small wheelbase, short wheelbase, two liter engine, twin overhead camshaft. And the bodywork is very similar to an Escort as well. But yeah, I'd, I'd definitely take the Julia any day over a Ford Escort. So special, look at this thing. And a few more classics here the 1965 Julia TZ the teardrop front headlight covers and the 750 Competizione in 1955 again beautiful shapes this one almost resembles a 250 GTO a Ferrari right? very similar shape and with the uh, Coda Tronca which means the, uh, the completely cut straight rear tail almost looks like a Shelby Daytona isn't it more engines going on then we step into the formula formula one with the 33 Mondiale and the ambitious and very powerful driven by Giacomelli here and this is where I leave my heart. I leave it here, guys, because the 155 Super Turismo DTM, it's always been every single Italian's favorite since it came out. This one completely devastated the competition back then in the 90s. With the V6 revving as high as 1200 RPM making a noise on track that was quite a force to be reckoned with not to mention the victories and this is this is the engine look at that beautiful what a legendary car legendary engine for a legendary period of success and winning streak the 155 V61. 
and after all these beauties we can head over to the exit where we find the most outstanding collection of matchbox cars and models and unbelievable like such a well curated place more of an experience than a museum this is also the plants where they were making cars and also the test track of Balocco and another um, hand drawing of it stunning just want to give you guys a bit of an understanding of the success that Alfa Romeo had throughout the history of automotive and the brand these are all the winnings the winning the victories of each single race in each single category like Campionato like for example the Grand Prix the uh, Mille Miglia the Le Mans 24 hours Cop uh, the, the Vanderbilt Cup uh, Targa Florio and all of that these are all individual all the single victories from each competition each race where they won and uh, I count a lot of them there must be at least a thousand on this wall starting 1913 and ending up to uh, 2007 when, when Alfa Romeo was still competing it's crazy to see all the 70s victories here look at that look how many unbelievable European Touring Car Championship Formula One unbelievable so so much history I'm so proud and that's pretty much it guys I'm a little bit gutted that I couldn't show you the 33 Stradale which was here before but not now this is the end of the museum uh, I mean I would say of the cinematic experience rather than museum it's been amazing and I'm so grateful I was able to show it to you if you have time and you stop over around here around Milan especially if you have like a flight connection and you can stop over for a little bit longer I highly recommend coming down here guys it's amazing I was joking guys it's not the end of it there's more stuff going on here as I was telling you about the Giulia Super was the car used by the Carabinieri back in the 70s a true terror on the streets for all criminals and its top speed of 175 kilometers an hour and then the more recent one the one I grew up with um, the 75 and the, these, these were all modified for pursuit and seguimento Alpha 90, 1987 and the Alfetta 2.0 Quite the journey, isn't it? Almost hard to believe that so much technology and engineering wonders came out of one single brand and that's just the beginning guys next stop is the Ferrari Museum in Maranello following the exact chronological order of how events unfolded back then Many of you might not be aware of it, but Enzo Ferrari was once employed at Alfa Romeo and decided to ditch them to start building his own cars. History will prove Enzo right, gifting us some of the most magnificent and exclusive vehicles in the legacy of Italian automakers and beyond. A big thanks to my father for coming along and for his precious knowledge and automotive insights. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. This is Andy from Race Cars Universe. I'll see you at the Ferrari Museum, guys. Bye bye.